Welcome to Super Mario Maker on the Wii U. I've already done a couple a couple uploads on this game. I decided to delete them because I felt I haven't explained them very good. And I, I know more about the game now than I did when I did my first upload. So I'm going to kind of do things a little different. Anyways, a lot of people when they see the Wii U, they think it's a portable system because of the gamepad. So if you see right here, this is the gamepad. And it looks like a portable system, but it's actually the controller, and it's got a touch screen where you can use a stylus pen. I'm not sure if mine came with a stylus pen. I imagine it probably did, but I didn't take everything out of the package because I got the Wii U Super Mario Maker Deluxe Edition, which came with the game downloaded into the system. And I didn't take everything out of the package, but I just used an ink pen with the point closed inside. So this these are the all the courses I have made. You can make up to 130 courses. Now originally when you first start making a course, oops, I'm gonna go ahead and go to make a new course. Now when you first start making a course, you start out with the original Super Mario Brothers and if you move, you notice that the course is like really short. You can extend that by putting your stylus pen on the G at the bottom of the screen and dragging it all the way to the end. It's kind of cool when you're designing the course to have the original music, but they have a different style of it. And you can click on these items at the top of the screen, like the ground. And you can put those in wherever you want. You can also click on that yellow circle and raise the starting point all the way to the top of the screen or the bottom, wherever you want. So you can leave gaps too, like let's say I want to leave a little gap here, go over here. And you got all those items at the top of the screen to choose from. Now originally when you start you don't have that many, you just have certain ones. Tap on the Koopa, put a Koopa wherever you want, you put pipes, and you can make these pipes as big as you want. You can turn them sideways if you want, so if I want to put like a couple right there. You can just hold your stylus <clears throat> pen on one spot and just use the D-pad to move it. Put question mark blocks up as many as you want, and you see the mushroom at the top of the screen. Take it, you drag it, and you put it inside one of these things. And if you want to see how it is so far, you can go ahead and hit the play button in the bottom left hand corner. I want to make sure my screen is adjusted correctly. It looks pretty good. Hit the play button and you can try it out. You can go back to edit. The only one of the features that I don't like is like in the original Mario game you can get a mushroom and when you get to the next block that has a power up item in it. If you already have the mushroom, it's going to be a fire flower. If you don't have the mushroom, then it'll be another mushroom. They don't have that option. You can only choose like either a mushroom, a flower, stuff to put in like that. So, like I could do this. You got a fire flower. In the, in the original Mario game, you can't get a fire flower if you don't have the mushroom first. But 
eventually as you make a course you start unlocking other items you can put in there if you look at this list these are all the different things you can put in and like these koopas you can also go to the wing which is on the second row here drag a wing to the koopa and now it's a flying koopa or a super koopa Now if you want a red Koopa, see now for those of you who are familiar with Super Mario Brothers, the green Koopas walk off edges, the red Koopas don't. For example, put a green Koopa up there. As you can see they walk right off the edges of things. Now you can put a red Koopa in there by taking a green Koopa and shaking it back and forth. It turns into a red Koopa. If you want to turn it back into a green Koopa, you you just shake it again. See the red Koopas stay, they don't walk off edges. And for the red Koopas, if you put a wing on them, they just stay stationary. Whereas the green Koopas, the green Super Koopas move towards you. So, you can put the, the Hammer Brothers in. There's quite a few of these things that are only in Super Mario 3 or <clears throat> Super Mario World, but eventually when you design a chorus, you unlock other levels, such as the basement level, or the underground level, whatever you want to call it. You can also put Lakitu in there. You throw Spinies. You can jump on them, float on them, so there are things in this game you can do that you can't normally do in the Super Mario games, like in the original Super Mario Brothers. If you happen to jump on the Lakitu, you can't ride in this cloud. This game you can, and you know what, if you want him to throw something other than Spinies, like let's say Koopas, just take a Koopa and drag it to Lakitu, and he'll throw those instead. <laughs> You can also have them throw mushrooms, fire flowers, I believe coins. Okay, throws a whole bunch of coins. You can also do that with pipes too. You can have them shoot bad guys out of them. You can have coins shoot out of them. So there's a whole lot of options you could do in this game that you didn't see in the original Super Mario Brothers. And you can also have Mario go down a pipe too, like let's say I drag him into a pipe. And then there's an alternate level which you could choose whether you want it to be the above ground, underground. First you gotta make a pipe for him to come out. So you can make it like this above ground, you can change it to water level. But see, you can only choose between those two different levels, you can't have like multiple where you go down multiple pipes and it keeps coming into different levels. You can have up to 10 pipes per, like, this, um, like, let's say I'm designing this underground here, you can have up to 10 pipes, but all of them will lead to either the water level or whatever level you have that one be. There's also the lava level. And... See, there's quite a few other items I could put in here, but I want to save them. Okay, now, I don't know what this mushroom is right here. The question mark, because I originally designed eight Super Mario courses, and 
I deleted them since you can only save up to 130 because I had more fun doing Super Mario 3. So I got up to 64 levels of Super Mario 3. I made them, I divided, like divided them into worlds, eight levels per world. And after doing that, I started doing Super Mario World and realized, that's when I realized you can only have up to 130 levels. So I decided to use the rest for Super Mario World, which I'll kind of get into that a little bit later. So I deleted all my Super Mario levels. Okay, so yeah, you get the mushroom and it turns into weird things. I really don't care much for that feature. But, anyways, once you unlock some, some of these, you end up unlocking Super Mario 3. This was my favorite, Super Mario 3. It's always been my favorite game, so that's probably why it was my favorite level to do. See, and you could put cheap cheeps in here. Shake them if you want a red one. A lot, there's a lot of items you can shake and turn it into something different. You can put, I'm trying to find just things like for Super Mario 3. Okay, you get Goomba Shoe. Pull this goal closer. I'm gonna put a ground in here. So you see, when you get to the goal, it's just like the original, except for you don't get to collect your cards to get like extra lives. You just collect the card and ends the course. Now there's also. Super Mario World. Actually, I'm going to show some more Super Mario 3. You got the ghost ship. Not the ghost ship, the airship. So, I'm just, right now I'm just kind of showing the different things you can do, and I'm going to show some of my levels. Actually, I'm planning on showing all of my levels that I made so far. You can put cannons in here, and you can make them as tall or as short as you want. And they shoot out, they shoot out the bullets just like the original. Or if you want them to shoot something different, you could put like a star, let's say, or mushroom, a bad guy, anything you want in there. Okay, that, that question mark mushroom, if you play Super Mario Bros. 3, that turns into a leaf. These cannons, you can also shake them. And they'll shoot, th they'll shoot out a lot faster. They're, more, they're like more aggressive cannons. It's like a heat-seeking missile that follows you. Or if you want to put something in it, like a bad guy. I'll shoot the bag out really fast. That's what happens if you die. And these things from Super Mario World you can put in there. And you can ride in those. Now if you shake that thing, it's a different you can shoot fireballs. And now if you have the fire flower with this thing, you 
Press the air button to jump out, by the way. Hold the fire button down. Shoot up big fireballs. And that can destroy a lot of blocks, like these. You can also destroy the ice blocks. You can put these que invisible question mark blocks in. Let's say I want to put something in there. Actually, you know what we haven't seen yet is an extra life. There's also these cannons up here that shoot. You tap on them to change the direction where you want them to shoot. And another thing you can do, take one of those cannons, shake it. It's an aggressive cannon. to the lava level. You can, put, you can put Bowser at the end of the level. Whoops. Um, press the dog at the bottom right hand corner to undo what you just did. So you can put Bowser there or if you shake him, you can put one of the Koopa kids in there. Shake him again and turn him into Bowser. You shoot him a bunch of times and you kill him. Hey, you gotta watch out for that too. If you get this. Now the one thing this game is missing is an overworld map. So it'd be kind of cool where you could do that, put like your courses all over the place. So, whoops, wrong button. So you got these bob -oms you can put in here. Now these bob -oms are, actually I'm going to put it further down. So these bob -oms are kind of harmless until you jump on them. Then they become activated, or if you shoot them with a fireball. But if you shake them, they're automatically active right when they spawn. And I've actually used those in some of my courses because they can blow up blocks. So, I actually use them to become useful. You got these guys, the chain chomps. And you can actually have those chain chomps not be. You can make them so they're not attached to the post by shaking them. And they're kind of free to bounce around. There's also these things right here. You stand on these and they're it's kind of like a treadmill. And you can make you can have them go either way you want by tapping on the, tapping on the arrow button. So you can have one go one way and have another go the other way. got these track things right here. And then what you can do is you can put a platform on it. And 
you can ride it to wherever the ending point is. Now you don't have to put a track to ride on it, you can put other things on it, like you could put bad guys on it, have them go around the track, or, one thing I've done a few times, put one of those on it, on, on another one I should say, oops, okay that didn't work. Now you gotta watch out. You can try to jump over it. And these arrows right here, I put those in some of my courses just to show the player where, like, which way to go. And if there's like a kind of a difficult course. And you could put these fire things in it. If you shake it comes up like this, that means the flame out of one is going to shoot opposite of the other one, so for example, that one shoots, and then it's on a lot of timer, then that one shoots, so it's timed. You got the P-block, of course. Here are doors that you can put in courses. You can put like a door wherever you want, and you can take and drag the other door to another point in that course. Have them transport like from one area to another. So that's been kind of a fun feature I've used in many courses. You can go back. Now a new course that they just or a new feature they just added is a different type of door, so you sh shake the doors. Now you got P doors. And the only way to activate them is by jumping on a P block. Once that P runs out, the door is no longer active. And another door they also added a key door where you need to get a key to unlock it and you can put that key anywhere so that's actually been a feature I've been using in quite a few of my videos lately or I should say quite a few of my courses you can upload these courses too so other people can play when you first start playing you can upload up to 10 courses eventually if people like your course they can put a star on them and if you get a certain amount of star, it gives you the ability to upload more courses. So I'm up to 20 right now, and I've got 20 of 20 uploaded. So let's say I want to put put this over. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and I'll get rid of that. Okay, so, let's say you want to hide a key, I mean, you don't even have to hide them either, you can just put them in plain sight, but normally I like to, like to put them, like, hide them somewhere. You take the P block, shake it, to turn it into a key. You can collect up to four keys, well, actually you can create up to four key doors in one course, or actually four of any door. And so, some, like some of the courses, I put like four key doors and hid four keys. So you get the key. And now, whoa. Well, this is great. Okay, I'm gonna have to do it over. When you get the key, it automatically attaches to you. Oh, wrong door. See, now I did. Now I had all my Super Mario 3 levels created before they came out with that feature. They act, that was actually recent. I'm currently making Super Mario World levels that have the key doors, so I put 
quite a few of them in my Super Mario World levels. I don't have any in Super Mario 3. But you can also have the vines. You can hit the blue button right there, that thing on the right side to delete some of this stuff. But you can put these vines in. Climb up them. And you know another feature that you didn't see in the original Super Mario Bros. 3 is you can put bad guys inside of question mark blocks. You can put like a Koopa in there, you can put one of these piranha plants. Now if you take one of these piranha plants and shake it, it turns into one of the kind that shoots fire. Got dry bones. Ghost. Oh. Okay, let's get rid of Bowser here. Cannon. Now these ghosts, if you're playing like Super Mario World, a new feature that I found is if you take a ghost and shake it, it turns into one of these ghosts. Circular ones. So I've used this quite a bit too. Whoops. So you want to try jump, getting in between there without getting hit by him. Another thing, there's, you can put wings on just about anything here. Put them on these ghosts. They'll do this thing. Now I didn't, I didn't actually find this feature until just recently. So a lot of my Super Mario, actually none of my Super Mario three levels have this, the ghosts that move in and out. There's actually just the last few courses of Super Mario World that do that. But you can put like. A Fire flower in there with a wing, with a wing on it. And have that flying through the course. I was actually thinking about going back to some of my Super Mario 3 levels, and nice, I got a little bug. But I was thinking about going back to see my Super Mario 3 levels and adding some, like, the key, the door key features, because I came out with that afterwards. You can create the ghost house. This is actually one of my favorites, is doing ghost house levels and the lava levels. They've always been my favorite, the Super Mario World ones. In Super Mario 3, the lava levels have been my favorite. There's a lot, now, a lot of the courses I've designed, sometimes I'll just sit down and try thinking up ideas and I can't come up with much, but I usually come up with ideas when I'm like not playing the game. I get home and just really came up with some creative I ideas. See, one of the things I like to do in some levels is create like a barricade, like right here, let's say. And so now, the only way to get over there is to go in through a locked door. So. So this is the idea I've been using quite a bit in my Super Mario World levels. You have to find the key, then you have to go through a locked door. To go through the other door. The 
lava levels are always... For some reason, ghost levels and lava levels are just always... I come up with the best ideas. Actually, I'm gonna put show something else in here. Thwomp. Oh, you can put fireballs in here too, have them shoot up like certain areas. And wherever you put them, that's how high they shoot up out of the lava. And you got these things. I'm gonna get rid of this ghost. And let's see what else do we have that I haven't shown yet. We got these guys. Okay, another weird thing is you can put Yoshi in these courses. But let's say you put him in one block and you put him in another block. Now in the original Super Mario World, if you already have Yoshi when you get another Yoshi block, it turns an extra life instead, but it's kinda weird in this one. If you get one Yoshi. And hit another Yoshi block. It creates another Yoshi. So it's kind of like weird. Whoops, I did not mean to push up on that. Yeah, there's a few things I didn't get right. Which I'll be showing in a minute. I did it again. I actually don't use Yoshi in too many levels, but yeah, there's a few things that they didn't get right, especially in Super Mario World. I, I noticed one thing was like a lot of bad guys they didn't add, like the uh, Rex, dinosaurs, Monty Mole. You don't see any of them. And oh, what I wanted to show is Thwomp. Take Thwomp and shape him. Turns into one of these. Now this is a new feature that I just recently got. That's kind of cool. You can have Thwomp actually knock stuff out of blocks. But that big thing up there that destroys blocks. And for those, you could turn them either way. I have them go this way. Yeah, you can walk on him as long as you're like in the post-it invincibility mode, otherwise you die. If you have Goomba Shoe, you can walk on top of him. Oh wait, they don't have Goomba Shoe in Super Mario World, so I have to be playing Super Mario 3 to do that. block too and carry it around with you which is something I added to some of the levels where you need to find the P block and carry it also the P block does the same thing as the original Super Mario 3 you got these coins 
of these black it turns blacks into coins and turns and turns coins into blacks. So anyway, I think it showed pretty much everything you could do. You can add these things, I mean it's not really I'm going to have to extend this now. But with one of these things, you can like walk through them, or you can jump on top of them. And you can change the color of them too by shaking them. There's like three different colors. Oh, you, you get the, these things right here. The bouncy blocks. And you can put items in there too, so it's kind of cool like... Busy beat only one. You put vines inside of them, you could put mushrooms. Now if you hit them from the bottom, they will go upward. And if you hit them from the top, they'll go downward. And they got these guys from Super Mario World, which I put him in quite a few levels. You know, the thing in Super Mario 3, I put Bowser at the end of each level, because that was back before I knew you could take him, shake him, and turn him into a Koopa Kid. But in Super Mario World, I'm putting the Koopa Kids, and at the end of all these lava levels, I always try to come up with something creative. I don't want it to be easy, where you just get to the level, you can jump right over Bowser and get the thing, so... There's some courses where I put like blocks over it. You know, something like this, and I'll put a pipe up here with the bombs coming out of it. So while you're down here fighting Bowser, you have to hold off as long as you can until those guys blow a hole in that thing and you can get inside. So that's one idea I've used. And, okay, I'm gonna show one more idea. I'm almost out of, my battery's almost dead. Another thing I did is put these blocks over the top of it. And you put Bowser in there. So it's actually kind of like the real ending to Super Mario 3. You need Bowser to break those blocks. So you ha have to wait for him to break the blocks and get down there. So, Anyways, that is pretty much all there is to say about creating levels. This feature right here is kind of weird. This thing is... So if you want Mario to be able to go one way but not the other, you can go to the right, but he can't go back the way he came. He can't get back through there. So... I think I did use those in one level, but can't remember. So anyways, now that we've seen how to design the levels, I'm going to show you can save them, see, so go to new save or load. Go to core spot and I'll show all the levels I made.
I see this one I already made 5 1, 5 2, and then 5 8. So I'm making 8 levels per world. And the thing that annoys me is you can't play them like a full game. You can only play like, let's say, these 4 levels and it's done. Then you can play these 4 levels and it's done. So at least the extra lives do have some purpose. Otherwise, if you could only play one level at a time, there'd be no point for the extra lives. But, anyway, now that we've seen all that, I'm going to go ahead and do... Start with my showing all the levels that I made, and I'll kind of mention some of the ideas I came up with that were kind of cool. So, hope you enjoyed the first video, and I'll see you in the next one.